Hi guys, in this video we'll be discussing the problem minimal inversions from code shift starter 74. Uh, the problem states that initially shift had an array A of length n. Uh, shift performs the following operations on A at most once. So he selects L and R that would be the starting and ending of a range and for all the elements in the range that would be A of, a, a of i, he would increment them by 1. So he would make A i equal to A i plus 1. So now we'll uh, so let's say after performing these many uh, these operation at most one or this operation at most once we'll be having a new array obviously that would be b. So we have to perform this operation in such a way that the inversion count of b would would be minimized, right? And at the end what we have to return is the uh, the difference in the inversion count of the array a and array b. So with that let's get started. So initially we, let's say we have an array that is a1, a2, a3. Uh, let's just call it a4 and a5 right so this particular array is a and it, it has an inversion count let's say a i a now we'll perform some operations we'll select a l and a r and for all the elements that would be a i in l r we'll make them a i plus one so now let's say this the new array formed is called b and it would have an inversion count i b right now what we have to do is that we have to say that the div uh, so the difference in the inversion count would be ib minus ia we basically have to maximize this term or this or this value or in the other words since ia cannot be changed it's a fixed value we basically have to okay ia minus ib sorry yeah so since ia cannot be changed it's a max it's a fixed value we have to minimize the term ib right so how can we do that now let's talk about intuitions over here so my first uh, first claim or my first intuition is that it would always be beneficial for me to keep my r at the end my l can be placed anywhere and that i have to de determine that what would be the best value to place my l but my r would always make sense to place at the end now why is that the case uh, that's because if i place my r at the end and in, so let's call it r2 maybe right and in other scenario let's say i placed my r somewhat over here let's call it r1 right so now the only difference in the two things would be that all these elements you know let's call it x y z right let's call them them a b c right so and my l was somewhere somewhere over here let's say right so in this case in my in case i selected r2 then also my x y and z would have been updated by value 1 right so is it possible that instead of r1 i selected r2 and my inversion count increased Definitely, definitely it's not possible because the entire definition of inversion count is that uh, you have two indices i and j such that i is less than j and a of i is greater than a of j right so now since we are increasing the value of an element that is to the right so right now this was the array i had these elements to are to its right right so now if we increase the elements that are to the right of these elements there is no way my inversion count is gonna increase because over here the lesser element uh, the lesser element or the element to the left has to be greater since i'm increasing the value of the elements that are to the right inversion count is no, no not gonna increase so that is the first intuition and i will say the only intuition that's required the rest is plain and simple logic so what i can say is i'll uh, start traversing from the right itself because my r is always placed at the end right my r is placed at n minus one now I'll have to check what is the value of L that would make the most sense, right? So what I can say is that let's say for n index i, my r is already fixed. I have to place a L. So my L could be at i or could be somewhere to the left of it. But right now, since I'm at, at index i, I'll consider that my L is at i itself. So I'll I'll say the elements to uh, there are some elements to my left and some elements to my right. Now whatever elements are to my left, right? and they have a value of let's say okay yeah and they have a value of x plus one so the element at ai let's say is x and to my left whatever elements have a value of x plus one so right now they would be causing an inversion right so let's say they are x uh, they are let's say a elements that are to the left of my uh, in of my of the value that is at i so they would be causing a inversions in total because they are greater than x and they are to the left of it but if now 
I select this as the L, right? So I'll be increasing this particular element by one. So this would become x plus one. In that case, these two elements would become now equal, and they won't be causing any inversion. So in case I select this as L, then I'll be decreasing my inversions by a total of a amount, right? So this is my first conclusion I'm drawing. What's the second conclusion now? What? Not my first conclusion, but let's say the first observation I have. It's not a conclusion per se; it's observation. So my second observation is that let's say I have an element. Okay, so this is tough to explain by this. So let's say I, by while traversing, I reached over here, right? So I reached at the element x plus one. Now I'll be performing the same thing over here. That was my first observation. But wait a second. Now what would happen is that if I make this element equal to x plus two. right if i perform the same operation on it that is increment its value by 1 it would become x plus 2 is that correct so what would happen is that the element to the its right for example in this case that was a of i that we have made x plus 1 so its element is its value is x plus 1 itself and we considered that while making the, while doing this operation we decreased the inversion count by uh, by a total of a a value but this won't hold true because this will is now uh, this value right now is x plus 1 after performing the inversion uh, after incrementing this and the ele element that is x plus 1 which i was calculating which uh, which had a decreased inversion is now becoming x plus 2 so now it again would be causing a inversion so my second check would be that all the elements that so let's say i have a, so as to generalize i'll say that let's say i'm at a of i all the elements to the right which have a value of a of i minus 1 would be such that they have already decreased the number of inversions by considering that a of i minus 1 is going to increment by 1 so i have to neglect that case so what i'll say in second observation is to my right uh, all values or count of values so hash denotes the count right so number of values which are x minus 1 the first observation are uh, the first observation is number of values to the right or to the left which has value x plus 1 i'll be adding this to my answer i'll be subtracting this from my answer i hope that point is easy to understand and clear now with that what i can say is okay so with that what i can say is uh, in order to call it up i'll uh, I'll, i'll just simply use a unordered map so i'll be using two unordered maps one is left to right and other is right to left so initially i'll be populating all the elements in left to right cool so i'll be populating all the elements in left to right and then i'll start my traversal from the last index because as i as i told that it's always beneficial for me to keep my uh, right index to the last cool. so over here i'm starting the traversal now while i'm doing the traversal i'll keep incrementing my uh, count of the elements that i am seeing so that would be stored in right to left also while I'm, while i'm performing the traversal i have to decrease the count of the element that are now available to my left right cool so i'm doing that then i'm checking the number of elements that are available to my left and i have a value of vi plus 1 i'll add it to my sum i'll decrease the number of elements that are to my right and have a value of vi minus 1 and i'll set a global variable so the global variable over here which i have taken is res i'll be set my global variable to the maximum of the value i've already seen or to the current value at that i'll simply print my answer so yeah this was a simple question uh, if you still have any doubts please let me know cool guys thanks a lot